Hello and welcome to week 31 of the Foot Weekly podcast. And uh, on this episode, we'll be talking about content. And I have back a content expert we haven't had in a while. Although I could almost say the same as well for Foot Legend Air Japes. Hello. Content legend, Ben. Maybe once upon a time, but certainly, <laughs> certainly not now. Yeah. Uh, although I, I do have a couple new players in the squad that I've been testing out. So I guess there's mm. some content out right now. But I think the, you know, the elephant in the room or whatever is team of the season is coming. Yeah, it certainly is. We'll be talking about that quite a bit on this episode. But we'll start by just covering the current content and also stepping back a bit because we need to pick a pound for pound powerhouse last week and uh, we have on this show the perfect person to pick that pound for pound out that was a lot of peas it is nate the foot accountant hello howdy ben it is great to be back on the podcast and i am very excited to talk things team of the season and especially building up to it getting ready for it preparing all the good stuff We're ready to pack blues again team yeah. of the year the blues didn't flow but team of the season is usually a different story and Nate, how many times have you said team of the year instead of team of the season so far? <laughs> or is that something you're uh, good at getting out of your system? Uh, no, I'm not good at that. I've said <laughs> team of the year many times. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the challenges for this kind of content. And we'll get you to pick last week's pound for pound winner. And these were the nominations. So we had the Golasso Lampard, the Golasso 90 Park, the Golasso 91 Keen, and the Evolved Shabby Alonso. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with, I mean, this is maybe my spurs in me coming out, but I'm going <laughs> to go with the Robbie Keane because for that kind of stats on a card for only like 30K or 40K, I just think is kind of bananas. Like that's a tots feeling level card and he's only 30K, 40K. So I'm going to vote for him. Yeah, I think that was actually Josh's, but he only picked it because he couldn't pick Lampard. So, you know, nice from Josh, just uh, slightly lucky out there. But yeah, we'll move into actually not Pound Found this week because, well, I guess we could pick the best bit of content that we've had. It's probably a good way to go about it. Um, what would you nominate as your sort of best bit of content? And maybe it doesn't even need to be a player necessarily, Nate, that we've had over this last week. Oof, now you open it up to like yeah, I was gonna say, um, SBCs and packs. <laughs> really uh, threw that curveball at you there. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. I'm a big fan of the 83 times 10 just because mm. it's repeatability and how easy it is to do. You can do it for free every day three times by the daily gold upgrade grind and then the team of the week picked, the player picks it out too. So, I mean, I'm just a huge fan of the 83 10 and that just allows you to craft all the other SBCs you maybe want. So I kind of shout that out every time it's out. Yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, in terms of player content any particular standouts for you yeah i mentioned this right before the pod but eric dyer never used him <laughs> i don't think i've ever touched an eric dyer card and said that would go into my team and this one looks pretty solid so i'm excited to get him in a team and try him out and at least uh have a chance for an upgrade i mean yeah the 42 agility is not good but he's got 99 strength so he can't be that bad got 99 strength agility ain't one it's not how that's it works. right <laughs> <laughs> And actually, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because he has the 42 agility, but jockey speed is impacted by defensive awareness and jockey play style or play style plus. He has the regular jockey play style and 89 defensive awareness. So he actually, at least when jockeying, probably won't feel nearly as bad as people would think. But yeah, on the ball, trying to turn him, uh, that could be a bit of an issue. But it's an interesting card and I bet he does feel super strong in game actually. But I hear you have completed a recent SPC center back as well, uh, Japes. I have. I did the player of the month Bastoni. I didn't do the showdown and I played against him a few times and felt like he was pretty annoying. So I mm. decided, you know what, we'll give this a run. Uh, I also have I talked about it on one of the podcasts last week, but Block Plus has become something I'm pretty interested in. Mm. And he's got Block Plus and Jockey Plus, two play styles that I'm, I would say I'm like pretty fond of. So uh, to go with, you know, base aerial and base uh, trash panda, as well as a plethora of passing play styles. So for the like relatively reasonable price that he was, I figured, yeah, we'll, 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 mm. we'll give this a test. Check him out. Yeah. And he's been he's been really good for me so far. I quite like nice. him. Um, yeah. Left-footed center backs can be a little challenging to come by at times. And he's been just great. So he's been fun. 
I like them. Yeah, nice. I like that. And I guess the most notable bit of content, perhaps, I mean, there's been the Trossard as well, which was one of the more expensive SBCs we've had alongside, uh, I guess, Sergio Roberto, also fairly expensive, 190k if you're paying in coins. Uh, looks all right, and I guess we'll be good with an upgrade. I know Mukiele has got a lot of love from people. Apparently, he's really, really effective. He doesn't have many defensive play styles, which concern me a bit, but I think as an attacking threat, he's quite good. Um, but the player, I think, that stands out really, and I've seen a lot of hype about, is the Florenzi. Nate, are you considering completing him? It's kind of an interesting one, isn't it? Because he's got, uh, what, only 90 max on face card stats. But actually, if you look at the end games, they look really good. Yeah, he looks very, very well-rounded. And I like his play style plus is pinged pass and the trash panda anticipate plus. Like, mm. those are, I use those a ton. I, I think anticipate is maybe the, the best play style plus in the game, I, I think, especially for defenders. Mm. But yeah, he looks really good. The price is awesome. And I've kind of just noticed too that we had the Zamborata, which a lot of people liked, and he's like 700K, and this Florenzi is only 100. And they're not one-to-one -one comparisons, but I mean, if you're going to use Florenzi as a right back, maybe he's a cheaper option than doing Zambrata. But mm. I mean, he's usable in both areas, right back or the middle of the pitch. And uh, I think Zambrata deserves a shot too, because that card is, that's a right back or left back since he's 5'5". Five -five. Uh, that you mm. can put in your and team. That's both positions, doesn't he? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. You can use him for a long time. Yeah, good to mention him actually because he's another one where it's a, an icon SBC. You know, maybe uh, his price comes out as being kind of expensive versus market price. But actually, like I think you know, he's someone that people are going to get a lot of use out of. And uh, five star, five star, high high, and press proven. I noticed Bruiser Florenzi actually also has Bruiser, which is nice for his size. I think it mm -hmm. uh, helps a lot. But I think you were saying previously, right, that Relentless Plus is really good, Japes, on fullbacks. You like it a lot. Yeah, I like the second man press for sure. I think that I talked about Ashley Cole previously and his big downfall is he doesn't have any form of Relentless, which is annoying. Mm. But it's it's definitely Relentless Plus, I think, is very, very useful on fullbacks because the second man pressing just becomes a lot more straightforward. You can like just apply pressure for in a different way or for longer. Um, so I quite like it. We haven't mentioned it, but that Nakata card is quite fun. Mm. And I've been using him as my uh, in my right mid spot in the four five one. And he's just like really. He kind of has that I'm everywhere feel to him a little bit. Mm. He has finesse shot plus with five star weak foot, so he like I mean pretty nice to have that option I would say available 94 shot power 92 long shots base I don't think you're banking on him to get in the box but he also has base 92 interceptions and still 80 standing tackle mm. to go along with Ben speaking of two of my favorite combos press proven and quick step uh, and ping mm. plus so for 100k I mean I think he's still Serie A too so pretty yeah pretty solid I, I really like him um it, he just has a knack for showing up places and with an engine, you like he's he's just set up for an engine very, very well. And he gets mm. 99 balance, 98 dribbling, like strong enough passing. It's just a like if you're just looking for like a fun card, something a little bit different. I don't know if he's still out, but he was definitely worth it for me. Or if you needed some Florenzi links, there you go. Indeed. The other thing, Nate, that people might have been doing over this past week is putting Golasso icons into the icon evo it's been interesting to see some of the wild price fluctuations right um because of that evolution and maybe something to look out for come team of the season where you'd think we potentially get similar evos considering it seems like they've been quite popular uh, we were talking last week about how it's a nice mechanic for ea because you know there's a good pool of players there that they can let come out of packs quite freely but aren't quite good enough perhaps for a lot of players to be putting into their teams but then they can get that upgrade on one of them just once and that player can become someone they're using their team can you see that being around in team this season do you think prices are going to go kind of crazy like they did last week or was that a bit of an anomaly yeah that definitely impacted the market last week on some of the golazo icons i could potentially see that coming out during team of the season, like a, maybe like a, they do for a team of the season moments card, which are usually a little mm. bit lower rated than a regular tots. It's like a team of the season moments boost or something. Um, I could see something along those lines. But mm. yeah, like the Desai and uh, Soul Campbell exploded. Like Desai was 330K and then went to 400, went back down and is now back up. 
because that's a card that is no longer in packs. It's an icon, so it's not that packable to begin with. And then he's been being put into the evolution, so it just kind of makes his supply go down, and I think that's keeping his price up. He'll probably drop again mm-hmm. when Team of the Season comes around, but yeah, the fact that he fits in that Evo is one of the best choices is uh, definitely making his price go up. Yeah, it's interesting. When it kind of reminds me of, do you remember the days where you had to submit a version of the player in the SBC? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Very similar to that because those players often would be out of packs and then would get inflated massively and would basically be the barrier to entry to an SBC, which is kind of crazy to think it used to work like that, right? Um, Obviously, we don't get that now. And and for good reason, it was a bit of a weird mechanic, I think. I feel like we've now probably covered most of uh, the current content, certainly players and things like that. And actually, one minor point I was just going to make is I have been taking a look at some of the cheaper SBCs, even say, I don't know, Rodrigo Muniz's player of the month, and thinking, you know what, maybe if I have a bit of spare fodder, I do complete certain SBC players like that, because you do spot that they end up going into an evolution at some point in the future and looking potentially really good. So if, if there's someone who has you know, a good combination of play styles that you really like, or mm-hmm. uh, perhaps they have high composure or something along those lines, like I think it could be worth just completing a few of these if they're cheap enough. Who are you doing for the showdown, Evo? I've not actually completed any. Uh, what about you? Well, I think the the question for me is like, are they going to release a new ish interesting showdown, or should I upgrade one of the players that I've already gotten right? Like, I got that um that Carlos Forbes showdown card, and Ooh, he is yeah. mm-hmm. already pretty good. And so I'm mm. like, do I go do I go that route, or is the, are they going to release somebody more interesting that's like further along with the curve? But I don't know. I guess maybe considering we'll probably kind of know what showdown players can be upgraded by later this week it's probably just worth waiting a few days right just in case there's suddenly a player you really want to upgrade but probably yeah i guess it's tempting to get in there on that we'll take a break and talk about what is coming later this week probably team of the season and how to prepare for team of the season and all that kind of good stuff after this break in just a second Hello, welcome back after the break. Right, team of the season chat. Uh, actually, before we talk about what is going to come, it'd be interesting to know from you, Nate, are there any particular things that you kind of recommend people be doing menu grind-wise? Because you know, typically, you'd have Josh on here probably mentioning what kind of things you'd want to do in the menus. Um, it feels like people are certainly having a bit of a dilemma about whether to open many packs because there's nothing really in there apart from the team of the weeks. Um, what would you recommend? What are you doing? be interesting to know. Yeah, I think there's a couple things that you can do to prepare your club pretty well because obviously team of the season is going to bring a lot of SBCs, whether it's upgrade packs or the player SBCs. So just taking a little bit of extra time, do the kind of annoying things, but the useful things to get your get some golds in your club and stuff like that is going to put you really far ahead, I think. So doing the daily bronze, silver, and gold, just those couple times a day, getting the gold commons at the end of it, and then rinsing those into the 80 plus player pick or whatever upgrade SBC is out. I know the 80 plus player pick and 81 plus have been like flip flopping every week. I think those are the best ones to do depending on what's out. Are you just holding them? No, I'm o- opening those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, opening those so that you can put those, let's say you get a range of 81s to 84s and then, you know, get, you get the odd here and there, like high rated card and a walkout, but the lower rated bulk that you get. That's perfect for then going into the 8310 or the 83 plus team of the week player pick. And then that's where you can start to decide, okay, do I want to save those 8310s or do I want to open those? Um, but that's just like, that's almost, you can do an 83 times 10 without even buying anything. It's just doing those daily gold upgrades every day. And of course, like playing the game and doing the daily play, even if it's just three quick squad battles games, like not even touching the controller, just scoring five goals on semi-pro and then setting it down like that'll get you a couple 80 doubles and yeah we know how the daily play goes the daily login like doing those like what's that maybe like 30 minutes of work and it's not even really work but clicking through the menus and getting a couple of games done that'll just Mm -hmm. allow you to have so much more fodder ready for team of the season but then also get more packs to save for team of the season but like you mentioned earlier too ben i think the packs that i would want to open right now it wouldn't be everything I've kind of put a rating of like 84 plus guaranteed packs I'm going to hold and a couple Mm -hmm. of 83 times 10s. 
But the stuff from objectives is like 80 times two, 80 times five, even the 81 doubles. I'm still ripping those because that helps kind of the menu grind keep going. Uh, and mm-hmm. you can do those 83 10s for quote unquote free. You can do the 83 plus player picks and get team of the weeks in your club instead of spending 20 something K on the market. And you can also put together those other major league upgrades like the 82 times 11 and maybe do a player SBC if you want to as well. So it kind of keeps the club churning and you're still kind of repopulating your club at the same time with that, with that fodder, the lower tier stuff. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think anything that's a lot of 83 plus players have been saving, but opening smaller 83 plus packs and then yeah, 84s have been saving as well. So that makes sense if people want some kind of arbitrary or somewhat arbitrary save point. Uh, right, let's move on to preparing market-wise. If people have any high-value mm-hmm. tradables in their club uh, that uh, they might stop using during team of the season that they want to recoup some coins on, is it kind of too late to sell? I mean, is it a good time to buy? There's certainly been a lot of drop-off in terms of players' prices over the last few weeks. There's definitely been a lot of price drops. Like If you go to any graph and look at the start of March until now, it's just a crazy decline. So we're definitely not Mm -hmm. near the highest point, but prices have gone up a little bit. I think the most amount of uh, panic and people selling was happening last week. And some prices have come up since then, since team of season isn't quite here yet. Um, And that panic kind of ended, but you know, there could be a couple of jump ups in price on some of your really meta icons, your top promo cards from most recent promos, maybe like ultimate birthday, you know, maybe a future stars or a Golasso card, like for the first week or two of team of the season, especially once we get into like prem tots, this is something that happens almost mm-hmm. every year. Like during prem team of the season, somebody who doesn't get a tots card, their best card, like, like let's say Varan doesn't get a tots card, but he's got the ultimate birthday center back card. That's insane, right? People will want to buy that and link it up to their prem tots that they get. It's cards like that in mm-hmm. the specific league of team of the season that is out will jump for that week, but then they'll drop off after that. And usually as we go through team of the season, the prices on most cards, even the team of the seasons that have come out before continue to drop because there's just new crazy cards every single week. And you like, you, you play with prem cards and then Bundesliga comes out. You're like, Oh, I want to try these. So then people are selling those to go and try the new ones as we mm-hmm. kind of rotate through the weeks. So I still think it's a decent time to sell most things. It's not as high as it used to be, but it'll save you some coins in the long run. But I always, I try to say now too, like prioritize the fun. If there's a tradable card that, I know people that have bought cards for a crazy amount of coins and they just haven't sold them because they don't think that card's going to leave their team for a long time because it's like an emotional player for them, player from their favorite club, whatever. So always have fun before the coins aspect, but thinking ahead a little bit might save you some headache <laughs> yeah if you're going to play champs over team of the season you'll pick up coins as well won't you and yeah I mean, for sure you know you do generate coins so it makes sense uh, and you may even pack some tradable valuable tots if you're lucky i guess let's then just talk briefly about what happened team of the season wise last cycle and the format it followed so we had the team in the season warm-up last cycle as well and then we went into team of season community and yeah. i guess we would have had voting for team of season community already if it was coming this friday and then we moved on to what premier league team of season yeah. and went on from there mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of weird that the team of the season schedule has been the same for a long time like starting mm. with community then going prem bundesliga la liga and some it usually goes in that schedule but somewhere similar to that it's just usually community and prem bam, bam, first two weeks. But then this year, it looks like they're changing it up a lot. Mm. Which makes sense because you've got the women's team of the season players coming in as well. So there was right. always going to be some some change, yeah. Right. And that almost makes me wonder is if these teams are going to just be massive squads of the men mm. and the women combined. Are they going to be like 18 to 20 something players in packs at the same time for like Prem Tots because you got the men and the women? I don't know. That's what I'm really curious to see. Yeah. Japes, what would you think they will do in terms of having the men's and women's? Because also that means probably if they're going to have, let's say, Premier League alongside the uh, Barclays Women's Super League, is the EFL team of the season, Football League team of the season going to come out 
as well at the same time? It just feels like too much, no? The thing that's throwing me off is they have the those packs in the store that are like your big league packs. Yeah. Right? Like the e-figs or whatever, however they call them. England, France, Italy, Germany, Spain. I think I call them e-figs. Mm. Generally, I feel like when they release one of those packs, they're like grouping stuff together from those leagues. Mm. Otherwise, like why would you do an e-figs pack just to open for a Premier League? Like that would be weird. Right. Maybe maybe it's based solely around this current best of team of the week thing. Like they're they're like, hey, here you go. Just for these leagues, you can get the top players or have a better chance. So maybe it's more nearsighted than I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think my my hope is that there are tons of cards from team of the season. And it's like these previous promos where we just keep packing a ton of them because who cares? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I hope I come up against full team of the seasons all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like there's going to be so many usable cards. That's usually how team of the season is too. Like, yeah, your top tier ones are difficult to pack and they're really expensive, but team of the seasons are decently packable. And that's part of the fun is that they boost the power curve. You get tots cards that are packable and you want to try them out. So, yeah. Yeah. I do think like it's going to be interesting how they balance things because previously it's almost been like team of the season has been quite a lot like some of the promos we've had this cycle just as regular promos in terms of quite packable sort of usable but not amazing cards been quite common um whereas this cycle that's kind of become the norm to some extent so i wonder whether they'll feel the need to kind of differentiate it add a kind of different quality to it but um we'll have to see one thing they definitely it seems like we can't confirm for sure have changed is the start of team of the season this cycle because there's rumors leaks you could say floating around which I think pretty much confirm we're likely to have a live team of the season. And there's been a card design that's uh, available that's in the back end of the game, basically, which shows that there is going to be a team of the season design with a up arrow, a bit like we've had on other live items. So I guess, Nate, this is probably going to come this Friday uh, and it will be the first team of the season thing we get yeah and i guess a quick question is do we get community as well or is that a replacement i think this is kind of a replacement for community to start off the, the tots mm. kind of what it like a month of team of the season that it normally is maybe community is still coming afterwards but I, maybe not like this seems to be the, the first thing of team of the season that is replacing community in that sense so yeah, it looks like there are a lot of cards coming to packs, like a huge team of players, and they will be the team of the season card design. But like you said, Ben, with the up arrow, there'll be live cards, and it'll kind of be like, kind of like the fantasy promo, uh, where they will get upgraded based on how the club plays during the league matches. And I, th- mm. I think the idea is so cool because. You think about coming down to the end of the season. I know the Bundesliga is kind of decided already with Leverkusen, but you think about the Prem, think about La Liga, Syria, all the other top leagues that it's coming down to last four, five, six game weeks, and they're all fighting for positions in the top four, the title. And now we have live cards in the game that will correspond with that and kind of add to the hype. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And actually, we do because of leaks and people can maybe uh, tune out for a bit or skip forward if they don't want to hear who is likely to be in this. But there have been leaks of the specific players they're going to be in. Actually quite early, really, for for leaks generally. Who are the highlight players? I'm guessing they're just big names that won't make actual team of the season squads. Yeah, I think that's part of this too, is that the players that are getting into this don't necessarily deserve a team of the season. It's just they're the live card representing their club for the whole Mm. upgrading aspect. Um, so like a lot of people when Doku was announced and leaked, they're like, what's he done to get a Tots? But <laughs> mm. it's more just about he's the city live card. You've got a Bruno Fernandez, you got a Modric, mm. Havertz is in. Um, Alan St. Maximin coming back after the flashback mm-hmm. SBC. He's going to have a live card. Solbaslai, Rafinha, John McGinn. I remember a team of season John McGinn from a couple years ago. I'm kind of excited oh, yeah. for that card. So that's just one of the many, many names. There are so many leaked names. It's crazy. It's going to be a big team. And 
interestingly, quite a few off leagues or non top five league players yeah. in that pool I was noticing, which is probably a good sign for those who like those uh, minor leagues. But then does that suggest we might see less minor league content across team of the season? I do wonder with the fact that women's leagues have come in, whether we do see as much. It would make sense perhaps if there weren't. Um, but what is interesting, Nate, in terms of the women's team of the season is that I think at the start of the cycle in their sort of notes, they said that women's leagues will be treated like other non-top five leagues. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that's really necessarily been the case in terms of the content that's been put out. Like it, they were given a full team of the year. I get a sense that they'll probably do more than just that, considering the popularity of women's players in the game. Yeah, if they did like full implementation of the women's players during team of the year like they did, I I would imagine they would do that during team of the season as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's really just we're waiting to see. Most of the other promos this year have been kind of, there haven't been as many women's players. Like mm -hmm. I think of Ultimate Birthday, you had like Gioro and Mappy Leon and Alex Morgan, but it was kind of like how they mentioned it would be kind of like the off-league players, so like maybe a couple every promo. So yeah, really curious yeah. to see if that affects the total number of tots we get or how they split that up. Yeah, makes sense. So just a clear schedule for people, what we think is probably going to happen. Friday, we'll have live team of the season. And, you know, there are basically two upgrade potentials for that, right? Like two opportunities for upgrades for those players. And then the following Friday, you'd think we go into Premier League team of the season based on past cycles? Yeah, I would think so. The only thing we could watch out for that would maybe confirm that ahead of time would be a vote. Like, if, mm. I don't know what, vote they would release it's kind of maybe past time for a vote especially if they're mm. going to have community tots but yeah i guess if we're going to vote on prem tots then they might release that here this week too so we'll, that might confirm something but we'll see yeah the other thing that's likely to happen is we get three play style pluses on the team of the season players it seems almost certain that that would happen do you think it'll be like two play style pluses on i don't know half the players or what kind of balance do you think they'll strike between the two yeah i've been thinking about that too i can't imagine they're going to just go all out right away with everybody having three play style pluses i think it'll probably mm. be like why i know mm. i know but you know we still have the euros i'm not saying i disagree content. with you i'm just saying like yeah i think but why not do press four for the euros did they say three yeah. is the max on like the early game or no? Well, I, I thought it was. Uh, something in my head was telling me it was. But then, you know, you saw that Kobe Minor could clearly have four or five wasn't yeah, it, on, the, true. on the image. So I think it seems technically possible. So I, I think they could go up to four. But I imagine that surely they'd do that in the summer just to get people a bit more interested when there's a downtime. And maybe they'll go three through uh, team of the season in Euros, potentially. I don't know. It's hard to say yeah. because basically... Uh, I feel like they could probably just decide to chuck it in if they really wanted to, right? Like, you know, if they feel like interest is declining sometime, then they could just start mm -hmm. uh, adding in four play style plus players because it, it doesn't feel like something that's like extremely difficult, but could throw the balance of the game <laughs> askew. I don't know. Are you not concerned about the power of players if they have four play style pluses, James? I guess it depends on no, the I mean, though, if everybody's playing with four, say, four play style plus players, why does it matter? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't, that's kind of my feeling. Is like, uh, it, like unless if the problem will will only come is this is why the thing with three play style pluses is concerning. If they're only going to do it for a few players, then that's going to be a problem because those players are going to be so far ahead feeling, and when you come up against them, it's going to be very annoying. Mm. Uh, so I'm like, just just give everybody three. Like, who cares? Yeah. And in the summer, just bump it to four mm. or five. <laughs> Why not? I think I'm just leaning towards the only three play style pluses for some of the players that get released because that's just how they did it earlier this year, like Future Stars mm. and those other promos that happened right after Team of the Year kind of had that same rollout. And to think about Team of the Season cards, I mean, probably these Live Tots cards are an exception. And may maybe they will have three play style pluses because it looks like their upgrades are only based on... Um, the wins and like the goals and it just gives plus one overalls. But, you know, Tots cards for regular team of the season squads, they're always pretty high rated. Like we're talking 92s and threes are common. And then you have 94s, fives and sixes that get released. So if they do a th another play style plus with such big stat boosts, mm. maybe that's too big of a jump in the curve for what they want. 
Do you think we'll see Team of the Season moments? Do we have a design or anything? I don't know. Uh, I think so. I think we have regular okay. moments cards like like last year we had the the Sun and the Varan. I think those are coming too. Mm, because that would kind of suggest that maybe those players would have two playstyle pluses and then the actual Team of the Season players would have three would kind of make sense. I feel like what interests me is really how much value was placed on having two playstyle pluses around team of the year. Mm -hmm. But also at that time, the stats were just also kind of crazy compared to what we'd seen previously. So it'll be interesting to see because I think there's only so much more headroom with stats in the game at the moment. Like how differently that third playstyle plus is valued. And I'd actually be interested because we've talked a lot about playstyles on the podcast, on gameplay pods, etc., how you've felt about the the valuing of playstyle pluses, you know, are they very valued and does it just depend what they are, that sort of thing. Yeah, I I think that playstyle pluses are valued pretty high. I also think they're hyped maybe a little bit more than what they need to be. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I think they are a bit, yeah. Like if somebody has regular playstyles, like I think like I have a uh, evolved version of Romain Alessandrini and I absolutely love this card. And he's got every single shooting play style as a regular play style, except for dead ball. He has dead ball plus. But like his finesse shots, I have to green them, but he can hit almost the same finesse shots that I can with like a Griezmann or a Salah, you know? With mm. So yeah, you have to green it, of course, and get the right angle. But I think that if you have a play style, that's still really good. And then the play style plus is just kind of like icing on the cake, but... To see three playstyle pluses on a card, I think that it'll just be hype for that too because it'll seem more meta and more OP. And I mean, if they're going to be the top tier echelon players that come out with those during team of the season to start off with, they're going to be outrageously expensive like team of the years were and like even future mm-hmm. stars Cold Palmer was earlier on this year too. Yeah, that's true. Because I guess, Japes, you know, really it depends on the combination of playstyle pluses and the base play styles, not just there being three. Yeah, I mean, right? you could have Flair, Trickster, and Bruiser, and we'd be like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, show some respect to those three. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it certainly depends. I think we'll see it, you know, probably the same way that we have seen it. Like, when they're introduced, like, it's going to be a basket of, like, probably two good ones and one that's, like, fine. Yep. Like, that would be the easy way to intro the curve without making it feel crazy. Like... Uh, so I don't. I'm I'm just not worried about it. I'm ready for a new evolution of cards. I feel like we've been playing kind of with the same stuff now for a little while, mm, like variations of the same th- same theme for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like when they introduced the two play style pluses, like that's when I was able to shift. I think the type of formation that I was playing, like around that time, because it it just mm. opened up more possibilities. And I'm like, hey, if maybe that'll happen again. And maybe I'll go back to playing something or try something different and it'll reinvigorate uh, life in the game for many people. Because I think we're, you know, we're excited for Team of the Season, but as, you know, we all know, oftentimes Team of the Season is the time of year when things drop off a little bit, right? Um, Mm. People go through it, they either pack things or don't pack things. So hopefully adding in the additional play style will open up a different aspect of gameplay and kind of freshen it up. But, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll continue the chat about the whole three playstyle plus thing on the gameplay pod, which is the supporter episode this week. So if you're a supporter, do check that out. And if you're not, well, search support for weekly to find out more. And for now, we'll take that break and we'll be back to talk about some interesting reward changes. Hello, listeners. A quick reminder that this podcast is made possible through the generosity of supporters out there and actually they aren't just doing it out of the kindness of their heart because you get a whole extra podcast every single week as a supporter and you can sign up for a seven day free trial right now over on patreon and after that it's just three pounds a month to continue supporting it makes a huge difference the podcast for a time wasn't able to be weekly because i had other work commitments but this has made it possible to deliver a podcast every single week and in fact an extra one too just for supporters as I mentioned so if that interests you and you want that extra content and actually if you would like even more there's the support to discord at the gold tier there is the hall of fame at the end of the podcast in the icon tier there are loads of perks available Uh, so why not check it out if you haven't done so already by searching support for weekly 
or following the link in the description of this podcast. If you consider doing so, that would be hugely appreciated. And a big thank you to all those supporters. As I said, keeping the podcast going and keeping Foot Weekly weekly. Right, let's get back into the pod. Hello and welcome back after the break. So some rewards news which may affect multiple modes actually and keep an eye out for information about this more officially but there have been changes in the pack code Nate which means that basically we'll be getting team of the season rewards during team of the season which we would expect right yeah there's some uh basically new rewards that have been added to the code and i mean we we expect new rewards and different rewards when we get to team of the season every year last year was the first year where the player picks we had red picks of tots cards that were actually the tots design that was red Mm. and that was really really cool sounds like that is potentially coming back um and as is the like guaranteed player packs the packs that are in the code Uh, mentioned containing an ultimate team champions player from the certain couple first tot squads that we might get so like even the live team of the season cards that we expect to come out first there's even a pack in the code that guarantees one of those as a champs version there's a max 90 Mm -hmm. which also kind of tips it that it's like okay that sounds like a weekend league reward and there's also (laughs) a three player pack live tots three players pack could that be like you know the tradable Mm -hmm. one that has been they, they used to do the team of the week pack for rewards and even the team of the season packs in previous years is that the tradable one that'll be coming out so that mm. makes me even think that we'll be looking at rewards changes for this weekend as early as that yeah well funny enough as you were doing that i did my due diligence and we can confirm that there is going to be a new team of the season reward structure to complement those rewards and it's pretty similar to last year actually we have it starting this Friday, actually, uh, on the 19th of April with the Champions Rewards and then Squad Battles Rewards are going to be added from the 21st of April and Rivals from the 25th. They are extending Champs by 24 hours and Champs will start at 8pm UK time on the Friday, so two hours after content so that Team of the Season players can be included in each week's Team of the Season rewards, which obviously means we know that those players are going to be released at 6pm on a Friday, as we'd expect. Uh, So, Japes, that's the summary. What are your thoughts? Are Team of the Season rewards important to your enjoyment? Yeah, I think, here's the problem. I think it becomes a little bit of a novelty, in a sense, because, like, in some ways, unless it's, like, players from your favorite club, like, how, how... Maybe that's not true. I've, I've used, like, the Maj quite a bit, enjoyed playing mm-hmm. with her this year but i i don't know i like part of me part of me always feels with team of the season i get these like unique ish players and i'm like yeah i'm gonna you know put them in and then i'm like eh, it's fine <laughs> so like i, I kind of hope we see team of the season icons and heroes and other stuff like that because I, f- I feel like ultimate team has become a you have a core base of heroes and icons and then it's really really easy to try out a bunch of these other kind of like unique cards mm. And I feel like, like, I, does it sound that fun to you to use like a whole Premier League side? Yeah, not really. Yeah, not really. Like that's like that is something of the past. And so it's like we're gonna all have these heroes and icons as parts of our squad. I hope they update those as well. But that mm-hmm. might be something that they're like, well, we'll save like a team of the season icons for the end of the promo you know to get people like re-engaged leading into the summer so who who knows yeah maybe i'm being a little too um pessimistic mm. about how this could play out to but be fair i, I guess it will be a bit different this year when you you know get players with different playstyle combinations and there's still some novelty for a bit and it's similar to what you're saying but it's like actually you might find something that you hadn't found before gameplay wise potentially mm. Whereas that wouldn't have necessarily been the case last cycle. So I guess that's something to potentially to look forward to in terms of trying new players you might get. Um, but if there's a lot of very generic players with similar play styles, then that maybe isn't so exciting. So yeah, we'll have to see what they do. And then the other thing, Nate, that's interesting is last week was the final team of the week, wasn't it? Yeah. And that's often caused team of the weeks to spike a lot. Uh, well, uh, just rise over time, right? Because they become less common and they're still required in SBCs, which last through Team of the Season or, or some part of Team of the Season. 
Yeah, and this year for Team of the Weeks has been such a different year because, you know, most of the year they're just discard 10,000 coins because they're supplied so much every weekend from the tradable packs and foot champs, mm. but they haven't been this year. So they've kind of maintained an inflated price. They're always like 20 to 30K. So yeah, the fact that they're not going to be in packs anymore is going to be interesting. And I think the one thing that people were like, oh, should we invest? Because, you know, they're going out of packs and EA will probably still require them. One thing they'll probably change is they'll do a requirement instead of just team of the week, it can be team of the week or tots. Mm. I don't know how soon they implement that, but, you know, that should be coming at some point. So seeing team of the week prices the way they are now, it looks like it's tempting to invest for sure. But I think I want to wait and see how much they keep requiring them during team of the season for like the first week or so. And then also see how much they are like if they implement the team of the week slash team of the season requirement. So just kind of let that start happening before deciding if I think it's a good investment or not. Mm. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at with those, especially because team of the weeks are just cheaper to do via the 83 plus pick anyway. Yeah. Even if you buy the players, it's literally 15, 16K or something like that. So yeah. Do you think if that expires and doesn't seem like it's coming back, that would definitely be a good time to get in there? Because I guess if people don't have that route to go down and there are SBCs that were released in the past that are still available, you'd think yeah. they will get increasingly rare at that point. But at the moment, hard to say. If they don't refresh the 83 plus team of the week player pick on, I think it's Friday, mm. then yeah, that would be that would be a sign, to, especially for the higher rated team of the weeks, for people that are trying to craft a Zambrata or a Dino, mm. where there's informs required on the higher rated squads. You'd want to look at like the 89 rated informs probably. But I have to imagine that that player pick will come back. And even if it's just repeatable for like, or, you know, like not expiring for, 50 days or something like that. Mm. I, I feel like they kind of they kind of need it to be there. If they're going to keep asking and requiring for those, they got to put out some sort of supply. Yeah, especially because over this next week, you'd think that there aren't going to be any regular team this season's released or kind of you know, that type of right. player to use as fodder or as a requirement in the SBCs. I imagine actually mm -hmm. for this week, they might not require any specific other rarity and it would just be like, you know, rating squads basically. And then... Once yeah. you get these discard team of the season players coming in, then they add the requirement. Although they could include, I guess, live players as fodder requirements potentially, but that would maybe be a bit weird, but still possible. Anyway, a lot of things that we know, but still a lot more that we don't know about team of the season, which is kind of how you want it, Nate, right? And maybe it's been a good thing. I don't know if you agree that there's been a bit less on the leaking front here and there over the last few months, potentially. I don't know. It's been nice to see every now and again, at least. Yeah, I like the surprise factor. I think there there have been a lot of week leaks like this last week, but before that, it was like I, a lot of people were questioning, like, did did something happen to the leakers? Like, where'd they go? Mm, who shot the <laughs> All sheriff? The jokes <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, bye, right. Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I like the surprise factor. I think there will be an element of surprise, regardless. Rolling up to this Friday with the live cards, um, and even the first couple of weeks of team of the season, mm. just because it's. It's team of the season, and there's so much that changes on the game during this time of the year. It's, yeah, it's just wild. Yeah, hopefully we get back to a situation where there aren't too many leaks as we go through team of the season, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you very much to our guests on this podcast. I assume at the end here, Japes, you want to give a big congrats to uh, Bayer Leverkusen? Oh, I mean, it was an amazing season. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't feel any type of bitterness no, no. towards that. That team is so super fun to watch mm -hmm. and like fully deserve. And I think now I see it more and more in like chats. People are like, wow, look at this team play. And it's like, yeah, they've been, they've been busy for a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, glad, it's nice that they're getting that level of recognition. So, um, so much for Neverkusen, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, minimal Evo chat because uh, Josh isn't around, but I'm sure we'll get back to it next week. But uh, yeah, in his absence, it's been great to have some different insights from Nate. So Nate, yeah, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. It's an exciting time of the year. Let's just hope hope that uh, it doesn't get screwed up somehow. Mm. Just give us some fun cards, good rewards, and yep. something packable. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if you missed out on your team of the year, Messi, well, maybe there'll be a team of the season for you to uh, pick please, up. Please, please. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Nate, we should say finally, actually, uh, you haven't been on for a bit, so people can catch your content on YouTube, The Foot Accountant, and on Twitch as well, right? You're live pretty much every day. 
Yep, usually live five to six times a week and then YouTube vids are every day. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to all you listeners out there tuning in. It's been great to have you. And if you would like more, then do subscribe via all the various different podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. If you're catching this on YouTube, drop a like, leave a comment. Uh, It definitely does help out. You can subscribe there too. And of course, if you would like an extra podcast every single week, then you can become a supporter. There's a free trial for seven days. And after that, it's only three quid a month. And you can do that just by searching support for weekly. Thank you very much to all you supporters supporting the pod and to those icon patrons. Dave B, Hugh J, Darren W, Alistair M, Don P, Rob P, Jeff B, Damon H, Tom B, Adam G, Neil P, Alex M, Jake S, Dan W, Roger D, Lee A, Andrew C, Nishant, Waterman, Dylan H, Adam R, Rob L, Brendan W, Michael K, David G, Jimmy K, Cherry Drank, John D, Michael B, Aditya S, and Joshua K. Plus a special thanks to Luke M, Dave B, Hugh J, Tom M, Darren W, and Pato Foot for advice and production assistance. Before I leave you, just one more thing to add though. Ultimate Team is a bit like life really. It has its many ups and downs. If you're having a few more downs than ups in real life in these more difficult times, then please don't feel that you're alone or need to struggle on without taking action. If you go to thecalmzone.net, there's loads of resources, advice, support, or even just a friendly chat for anyone who needs it. If it sounds like it could help you, then head over to thecalmzone.net. And for now, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next podcast.